welcome friends to the sixth episode of Hindus, the Friday's Fire Chats. Last couple of weeks, we have been discussing about how do we introduce the concept of money and the importance of finance in the life of children. And more specifically, two weeks back, we had discussed about introducing money at a very young age, that is between the age of 5 to 12. And in the last week, we had discussed a lot of concepts with respect to introducing finance to the teenagers. And teenage is a very, very important age. And we had predominantly focused on involving our children who are teens with respect to the family budgets and making them understand how probably credit card is used and what is the importance of probably dividing the expenses between discretionary and non-discretionary expenses and how do we manage these budgets so that it becomes a habit for them in their life. And more importantly, when they do this, they would have understood also the concept of inflation because we do face it on a daily basis. It is a white elephant sitting in the room, many a time ignored by a lot of us. So once they do this, we should also probably emphasize about the importance of not falling a trap to BNPL, buy now, pay later, but rather get into the habit of SNBL, that is save now and buy later. It's okay to have delayed gratification in life. I hope all these concepts you would have found it very useful and already started discussing about these concepts with your teenage children. And now in the second part of this finance for the teens, we are going to talk about the next important aspects about savings and investments and how do we bring about an equity culture in them. Yes, we have to continue the discussion with us, Mrs. Nivedita, who is waiting. Come, let's join us and have a very fruitful discussion. Thank you, everybody. Now, uh, apart from spending, how do we get them into investments and banking side, uh, Subhash? Absolutely, uh, Nivi. See, when it comes to the investment part, uh, if you remember the last video itself, I have told you about how we can have a minor bank account open account. and through that yes. we can invest in a fixed deposit or recurring deposit or a PPF, Public Provident Fund or a Sukhanya Samaradhi Yojana, the SSA account okay. for the children. So when we start okay. doing that, what I believe at this age, since they have gone to the teenage, you can allow them to start handling the money themselves in the sense that you can give them the passbooks. See, some uh, banks, they uh, most of these banks do not allow the minor to be a signatory. As a guardian, you are the signatory. You only have the access to the net banking and all that. But what I would say is, take them along when you are making any investments in their name. Ask them to fill the forms, the chalans, the withdrawal slip or deposit slip. And also tell them, how do you get your passbook updated? Or how do you download these statements online and then observe the entries? So what are the credits? Okay. So what are the debits? Mm -hmm. so whenever there are interest credits, that's when they start understanding the importance of compounding that would happen in their account. They start observing that over a period of time. Let's say you have opened a CPF account uh, at the age of five. Now they are 15. Over a 10-year period, they will start observing that every year, though the amount of investment that you are may making could be the same, but the interest earnings is increasing. So that's when they start understanding the benefit of compounding and it takes patience and discipline to make money in life. So if they start observing all these statements, they will start understanding about the importance of having investment habits early in their lives. Okay, super, Subhash. Now, I have seen many parents buying child policies for their kids. Uh, they think that that is a great investment from right from childhood for the so that they can use it for their ch children's future and everything. Can we invest for a minor in mutual funds or shares, Subhash? Absolutely. A great uh, question, uh, Nibi. Yes, we should expose them to the equity culture also, uh, meaning talking okay. about shares. Mm -hmm. And mutual fund SAP also is a fantastic way at a very, very young and early age, we should get them adopted to that. Yes, as a minor, you can have an investment account in their name, but the KYC again would be done for the guardian. Being a natural guardian, the father or mother can be the signatory. Or uh, in case of parents not being there, the grandparents can act as a legal uh, guardian or any other court appointed guardian can act. So KYC would be done for the guardian. Okay. And okay. you should have a minor bank account ideally because today the regulations say that though the investment, initial investments can come from the guardian's account, the redemption, whenever you are taking the money out, it has to necessarily go to the minor child's minor. bank account only. So I would say right from day one, since we have talked about the benefit of a minor bank account, 
you can open a minor bank account and make investments from that itself. So SIP is a great tool so that they can start understanding how wealth creation happens in the longer run, how compounding works in the longer run. When you're talking about shares, I would say they should understand about equity culture in the sense that you should start talking about how different companies operate and how different companies are at our home itself. Meaning, right from, let's say, they are using notebooks. What the notebook that they use? If the notebooks are bought from a stationery shop outside, behind that you will find what is the company name. Now, let's say, for example, it is classmate. Then classmate is from which company? It's an ITC. Then we are probably making chapatis at home. Now, what is the ATA? It is Ashirwad ATA. Ashirwad ATA is from where? ITC. Let's say we uh, consume biscuits on a regular basis. Say Sunfeast biscuits. Sunfeast is from which company? ITC again. So, they should start seeing how companies are so integrated in our day-to-day -day life be it HUL, Hindustan Unilever, or be it ITC, or any of these companies. Just for example, I am using these uh, names. Okay. You can ask them to probably list down what all companies are there at our home. Right from the tube lights to the fans, be it Havel or Bajaj or all this. So they will start observing how business is so closely integrated to our life. And we can tell them that probably if you want to own a piece of this particular company, the business, then you can invest in shares. You can open a DMAT account in the name of the minor child. But again, as I said, guardian will be the signatory for all the documents and all that. And once the child turns 18, then the investment will be completely handled by the child. You need to do a KYC in the name of the child when they become the major, about which we'll be talking about in our next video. But when you do this, when I'm talking about equity culture, they should understand that businesses go through something what we call as volatility. There will be ups and downs. Okay, But how do we befriend volatility? That is when the concept of systematic investment plan, SIP or rupee cost average will come in. So when the prices are low, you buy more. When the prices are high, you buy less. So they will start observing that volatility is a part of life, meaning part of life, even when you're talking about breathing, it is not equal. It is volatile. When you're talking about blood pressure, it is not always going to be the same. Pulse rate is not always going to be the same. It is volatile. So nature is volatile. Similarly, investments also have volatility. But the point is, how do you befriend volatility is through concepts like systematic investment plan. So if we can get them exposed to these concepts, it will really help in wealth creation for them in the longer run. Okay. Now, uh, getting into this topic of investments from their minor accounts, what about the tax implications, Subhash? Many of them uh, believe that they can avoid taxes completely if they invest in the minor child's name. That is not okay. true. Because as per the income tax uh, provision, uh, under Section 64, there is something called as clubbing provision. So as per the clubbing provision, if there are any investments made in the name of the minor child, the income out of these investments will be clubbed in the name of the parent, the father or the mother, okay. whosoever taxable income is higher. So probably what I would suggest is if you choose investments which are going to give you tax-free income, very few are there. For example, you have PPF or Sukhanya Samradhi uh, account. Okay. Yeah. If you are talking about fixed deposit and recurring deposit, the interest income is taxable. So if you have investments in FDs or RDs, the annual income or rather annual interest out of that, though it is in the name of the minor child, could be added to the parent's income. So rather okay. you can choose investments where it is not going to be taxable or choose products like mutual funds or shares wherein it is going to benefit with respect to tax deferral. Meaning what? If you're investing in their name, the income will be recorded only when you withdraw it. Okay. Meaning when the capital gains is booked. So you invest it till their age of 18, do not make any withdrawals from these investments. And after they turn 18, for any requirements, maybe for their college education or marriage or whatever, if you probably encash these investments, the capital gain incidence will come only when you take out the money. At the time of taking out the money, then it will be their personal income because they are majored by that age, right? After 18, if you withdraw it, right? So it is going to help you with respect to tax deferral. So in this way, probably you can take advantage Apart from that, yes, of course, investments in these, uh, some of it will give you benefit under Section 80C with respect to tax deductions also, which probably on a different day, I will uh, cover on that thing. 
Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor. Such a wonderful uh, topics and the things you have taught us. Actually, being mothers, we are very much uh, interested in teaching something new to kids. That too, for teenagers, it is a very complicated age. And in that age, uh, making them understand the spending and investment analysis is a great thing. And you assisting us, guiding us and taking our kids through this uh, age is very, very useful for us, Subhash. Thank you so much for enlightening us on this topic, Subhash. Thank you, Anivi. Thanks for that. And uh, my dear viewers, on whatever we have discussed today, what is it that probably you want to take away and start implementing in the life of your teenage child? Do share with us on the comment section. And if you like this entire video, please do go ahead and click the like button and share this with your friends. And to get continuous updates on our Finvis series, where in next week, we'll be discussing on how we can help the child who has turned into a major at the age of 18. What is it that we can do, especially with respect to the money management is what we are looking forward to discuss in our next week topic. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, Nidhi. Thank you, Subhash. Thank you.